Well, if you can't tell by now, Radeon 7's embargo has fully lifted. No more of the crappy unboxing things most people don't care about, especially when it's a box you don't even get. We've got all the gooey details, at least with our experience with Radeon 7. I might call it Radeon 64 or something. I apologize, I just, they changed the name a little bit from this. So, Vega 64, Radeon 7. I don't know why I'm doing that. Build from NZXT lets buyers customize their gaming experience based on their desired FPS goals in today's most popular game titles. Choose the game you want to play, set a budget, and Build will recommend the best parts for your build. Want to get gaming faster? Then choose Blitz Mode and order before 11 a.m. Pacific time and your order will be built, tested, and shipped same day. To learn more about NZXT's Build, follow the link in the description below. All right, this was a heck of a roller coaster of a review. Please do me a favor, watch to the end and watch the other reviews. Typically reviewers will just watch their one or two favorite guys and if it's like what they expect, they're like, oh, okay, cool, and off they go. But typically when you have an, uh, an interesting experience, we'll just call it an interesting experience, it's important to watch everyone else's videos to see if they're getting similar experiences and make your own opinions. Don't follow my opinion, don't follow any one person's opinion. Make a collective uh, objective opinion of your own on whether or not the product is worth it. But unfortunately our testing here didn't go as smoothly as we had hoped, and I wanna talk about that, but we did get through our testing, and obviously we tested our typical um, suite of games. Now, we're adding to that slowly. The problem is some of the games I really like testing, like Battlefield 5 and now Resident Evil 2 um, and Doom and stuff like that, don't have built-in benchmarks, and I know a lot of you guys are like, well, synthetics are not real indicative of performance. I understand that, but what we need is a repeatable A versus B taste test when it comes to seeing the um, the differences between the cards. You're not looking for necessarily a figure that says, this is the FPS I'm getting. It's, this is the FPS versus this, and this, and this, in the same test. That's the way you should be looking at these charts. Where there's enough reviews out there with enough games tested, you can get a sampling of what to expect if you're looking for a specific performance number. Obviously, it's gonna be better than the Vega 64. The question is, how did it stack up versus the 2080, and thereby default the 1080 Ti, because you know those two cards are like, competing with each other, even though they're two different generations. Um, as long as DLSS and the Turing co or the uh, Tensor cores are doing nothing and the RT cores are doing nothing, the 2080 and the 1080 Ti are essentially the same thing in terms of performance. So that's why we compared this to that and we threw the 64 in there so that you can see the generational improvement. With that said, watch the slides and then listen to the discussion because we have a lot to talk about. Okay, so the Radeon 7, uh, there's a few differences here in terms of the PCB. Um, obviously the cooler's different, blower style cooler, triple fan. Um, PCB wise, if we look at the back, you'll notice that not only is the card a little bit taller, it's the same length, we don't have the dip switches anymore which would change the GPU tack. The GPU tack is gone entirely. Also too, this is a dual BIOS card which had a performance BIOS and a standard BIOS which basically changed, uh, I believe the fan curve and maybe a little bit extra GPU um, boost 
but they got rid of that again on the Radeon 7. This card is $700, which makes it one of the most, if not the most expensive um, single GPU AMD has ever made. I believe the 295X2 might have been somewhere around that price point, or maybe it was like 999, but that was a dual GPU card and for its time was an absolute beast of a card, rivaling even that the, of the Titan Z, which was $3,000 at the time. So that was, that was, that was like the last amazing card AMD made in my personal opinion. And then they went away from that dual GPU design. So in terms of our experience, we're, we're gonna talk about temperatures first because with the triple fan, it's obvious that more power, smaller process, more focused heat means better cooling. I'm not gonna tear it apart in this particular video because there is a like a graphite thermal pad in there I don't want to destroy. Um, I'm gonna do another video where we do temperature testing by replacing that pad with thermal paste to see if things change. But the thermal pad is what they use. You can actually see Gamers Nexus did a video about that. We have a massive copper heat plate that actually touches the entire die array and everything around it, VRMs and all that, giving you direct copper contact. Um, a much more improved design over the Vega 64. Um, the triple fans obviously exhaust air basically from all three sides, not four because the rear is not open. So you got bottom, top, front. The bottom unfortunately goes kind of down against the motherboard. So this is kind of useless, just like on the, uh, the Nvidia card, which kind of sucks because if you look at the top, it's much more restrictive here versus the bottom because they had to get the giant Radeon in there as if you forgot who it was. It could have made it smaller and a little bit less in your face and gotten more cooling, but they opted for making sure you remembered who made the card rather than how car cool the card stays. Speaking of cooling though, there are the, you need to understand the way the temperatures are being reported. A lot of people don't seem to understand the edge temp versus junction temperature. So they renamed the hotspot temp found on the 64 to junction temperature, which is the same thing. And then GPU temperature on this has changed. Vega 64's GPU temp was just that, it was like, it was the GPU temp, like you would expect to hear on NVIDIA cards and, and whatever. It's like, that's the temp the core is at. There's like 60 some odd temperature sensors in here now. And what you're getting is edge temp versus junction temperatures. So junction temperature is the hottest of all of those sensors. It tells you whatever the hottest one is. And on this in this card, throttling starts at 110 C. Now, a lot of you already are like, oh my God, it's like the furnace days of AMD. We're back. Oh, it's like burning me all over again for NVIDIA. AMD will keep your room hot in the winter. That, that, that's not, the case here. It's just that uh, of the super concentrated die of the seven nanometer process with the 16 gigabytes of HBM2 that stacked, there's a lot of focused heat in there. So what you're able to see is the hottest of all of those different sensors, which is no different than any sort of like your, your CPU die or VRMs or whatever. That's normal. That is a normal temperature. We did see this get all the way up to about 114 C though at stock settings, which we were really concerned about. And I'll come back to that in a second. The lower temperature is edge temp. That is the coldest of the die. So no longer are you getting any sort of a rolling average or any sort of like a, just a singular number to look at. You're getting a range. You're getting the coldest and the hottest. Well, what's your GPU really running at? We'll pick any number in between and that's it. So I can't really tell you if it's running necessarily hotter or colder than Vega 64 because we don't really know, like we don't have that, that same volumetric metering of temperatures. It's not done in the same way. So I can't tell you, but I can tell you we saw 114C with stock settings, which then led me to immediately call AMD and be like, guys, I need to talk to somebody and see if this is normal. Cause I was experiencing quite a few issues with this. We had several games just completely lock up on us. Wildlands was one of them. Now remember we're media drivers here. These are drivers that are sent to media. Probably not the driver that's gonna be released when it's retail ready. It's kind of this weird limbo driver, which kind of sucks because I mean, Performance, as you know, can change and make or break with a driver. Same thing with stability. So we experienced a number of issues. Black screen freezes, complete restarts of the system when loading games. In fact, even complete restarts just sitting at the desktop, which, is extre which was extremely frustrating. Seeing the temps go to 114 and the fans not ramping up to the 90% or whatever they're supposed to was bad enough to make me get on the phone with AMD and get, go, I need to know what's going on here. My first, my first issue here, was with the exception of the fans not ramping up as high as they should. The black screen restarts, the um, overclocking persisting in the driver, even after clearing profiles, causing crashing, because if it was a crashed, if it was a profile that was crashing, even if you wiped it and got rid of it, it some of it was persisting and still causing crashes. Um, Steve probably will talk more about that. He had a bigger experience with that than I did. Um, they knew about it. They, Every problem I mentioned, they were like, we know, we know, we know, we're working on it, we're working on it, which was really disappointing to me because it was like, if you know about this, why weren't you telling us? Why weren't we warned? Why weren't we given more time? Why didn't you delay? 
because it's Chinese New Year. The driver team apparently is working on testing new drivers to, to be more ready for retail. And my problem with that is when you take a card like this and you give it to media and you go, here you go. That's our offering, what do you think? We have to go by the experiences that we're getting. And unfortunately, we caught some of those experiences. But I was really concerned with the fact that they seemed to know about these issues we were talking about. In fact, one of the issues regarding the black screen restart was it was sort of disclosed to us that it's known with um, two major brands of motherboards on the market, one being Asus, which is what we're testing with right here. So what I, what I asked them was, can I please get a test driver? Something to, to validate whether or not I've got some sort of a physical problem with the card here in terms of temperatures and the fan control versus um, the actual you know, hardware that we could be experiencing. So they were like, let us send you a new card, please. And they sent me a new card. Unfortunately, FedEx's plane got delayed and broke and stuck in snow somewhere. So that card did not make it in time. They did, however, send me the, the non-validated, non-testing driver, one that we did not do our test with in terms of scores. All of our scores are with the media driver, but for sanity testing, um, I wanted them to send me the driver that I could test, that they were testing to see if my problems went away. Fortunately, some of the problems we were experiencing, like Wildlands crashing, that was fixed. The fan curve acted normal again, so that was resolved, but unfortunately the black screen restart um, persisted. So here's the bottom line regarding this. This card, when it performs as it should, in games like Hitman, this card decimated Nvidia in Hitman. I mean, Hitman was an AMD title, I believe, but this card, tells me what that engine in that game absolutely dominated the competition. So it's one of those things where when it performed as it should, like when it didn't have any sort of weird driver bugs or crashes or whatever, in all resolutions, it just scaled beautifully. It ran well, it wasn't overly noisy. I mean, it's not the quietest cooler. The fans still have a bit of a chop to them. If you look at the fan curve, they're very aggressive. Like the actual fan pitch on there is very steep, which means that you're gonna have a very much more choppy sound to it, um, but obviously, in my personal opinion, thermals take precedence over acoustics because I tend to game with headphones and stuff anyway, so I don't care. We saw temperatures on the GPU, when I say GPU, I mean the Edge Temp one, sitting usually about 59 to 65C, but we saw a 30C delta between that and the junction temperature hitting 90s and in the mid 100s with the latest driver. So we no longer saw the 114 that we were seeing, 110 to 114, and 110 is where it throttles, by the way. So we did see temperatures um, and, and throttling kind of occur right around that range, but for the most part, it stayed just under 1800 megahertz, which is the advertised boost on this, which was actually pretty decent. The 64 card would definitely throttle down, blower cooler, not good enough to kind of keep that where it needed to be. The thing that sucks is the card performs beautifully when it performs, when it's not dealing with any of these random lockups or restarts or glitches on the screen, whatever it may be, um, the card performs exactly as it should. Um, a couple of tests that you saw in our slides were just, they're just anomalies. It's, 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 it's way behind in, in stuff like Metro, at 1080p anyway, and then it's, it's closer at higher resolutions, but we feel that there's something in the driver that's causing it to not keep up with 1080. Um, maybe we know AMD performs better in DX12 in a lot of instances, but unfortunately um, this particular card just obviously needs some maturity with the drivers, which is why I wish they had waited. I wished AMD had, I wish they had just had the, the, the balls really to push this out a little bit and say, we need a little more time. It's more important to put out a product to maybe make people talk about it positively than put out one that feels rushed. And if you want to compete in this space, as we all are direly hoping you can bring some competition to NVIDIA for the sake of pricing, your $700 graphics card that you send to media and say, we're ready, tell us what you think, should definitely feel like it's ready to be scrutinized at the $700 price point. I, I think the card is going to do amazing things when the drivers are ready. But as of right now, while we're seeing all these glitches and the freezes and the black screen restarts, um, like I said, the temperatures did improve with the latest beta driver that they let us test with. Um, it just needs a little bit more. Uh, if you guys can't, if, you, if, you, if I feel like I'm stumbling over my words, it's because I am. I want this card to do well. I want the card to be, I want this to be the savior. I want to see this card literally, well, like Kyle did in his little thumbnail, right? Like, <clears throat> take that Nvidia. I want to see that. I want to see Nvidia just feel a little bit pressured to do better. But unfortunately, this card, until the drivers are resolved, is not gonna do that. It also does not crossfire. This is where you guys sound off. You guys can call me all the names you want. You can say I hate AMD, whatever, which is absolutely not the truth. I wanted AMD to do well on this, and they're going to do well later. Do me a favor, please watch other people's videos, see what they're saying, because you're gonna probably find that there's a common thread here. 
Of a lot of the folks I've talked to, my problems are not one-off. My problems are more so the norm. And Kyle told me he had a lot, he didn't have most of the issues, if hardly any of the issues I mentioned. That makes him the one-off. We all know Kyle's a little off. Anyway, I got another card coming. Like I said, FedEx delayed it. So at least we can determine if the card that I was sent was faulty, which doesn't change anything I said because I, got, I can only go by what they sent me and that's what we got. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Try not to kill me in the comments. I really want AMD to do well, I really do. Um, this, this, this driver didn't do it. It's driver, I'm sure. <clears throat> <laughs> They're already gonna be clicking. Dislike, dislike, dislike. The audience won't let us have fun. If we have any fun in this video, they'll assume that we're not taking AMD serious. No, serious. But the thing is- Nope, 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 nope. Okay, well, the, uh, <laughs> wow. I really want AMD to do well. I want, I want to do, but do, but do, but do. You don't know. I had a thought and it just went. <laughs> <laughs>